It's February 2022. A lot has changed since my last home theater preview video from January of 2021. I have some nice framed movie posters in the stairwell now. Oh, hey Groot! Hey Groot! Heading down the stairs into the lower hall is my main assortment of collectibles. I love being greeted by this when first entering and exiting the theater. Let me show you around the final home theater one last time, as well as the projector closet that doubles as a server room, followed by the gaming and media room. Shortly after that, I'll do a quick demonstration of the projector. For the side and back channel surround, I'm using Klipsch Reference Series RB812 bookshelf speakers. Yes, I know, they're overkill. After a short while with the home theater, it became clear we needed some additional comforts. Basements can get cold, so we bought some black pillows and blankets to not ruin the black aesthetic of the room. I have a strict policy against pale legs destroying the contrast. Here I built these risers to be modular. I used standard lumber and plywood, covered the surfaces you step on with padding, and wrapped all the boxes with speaker cabinet carpet. Here's a nice big sound panel that I built. See my channel on how that was done. Above we have the Epson Home Cinema 5050 UB projector. In the ceiling are four Dolby Atmos speakers. The Klipsch CDT5800C2. It's hard to get them in the shot clearly. I film all my videos with the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra, and it's kind of trash unless you're outside on a perfect day. On to the projector closet or server room. I can never decide. I'm not going to rattle off everything. You can see this stuff here, plus there's always links in my descriptions. I've been asked several times if the room gets hot or how I keep it cool. Honestly, even after several hours with the subs cranked, it gets warm but never hot. After a year of use, nothing has ever shut down or failed from heat. Building speaker connects is one of my least favorite things. It's like a clone army. Here's something interesting about mounting this projector. I designed the room for a ceiling mount installation, but then nixed it for a full fiber optic ceiling instead. I built a pass-through and a shelf thinking how clever I was. No matter how much bracing I gave the shelf, it still bounced the projector around. I thought the subs were making the screen shake, but it was actually the shelf. Once I moved the projector to this wire rack, all vibration stopped and the image was stable. Before the wire rack, there was a time when Godzilla strolled off the screen and onto the side wall. Up next is the media server. I have several apps running on here such as Plex Media Server, Sonar, and Radar to automate most of my content. In the wall on the right, I have a pass-through to the gaming slash production PC. I put the PC in the mechanical area to eliminate any noise and heat that could be detrimental to the server area. I have an 80 foot fiber HDMI cable running from this PC through the walls and over the ceilings into the gaming room and it supplies me with a stable 4K60 and full bandwidth multi-channel audio. In fact, I am editing this video on this very machine at this very second from the gaming room you are soon to get a tour of. This little device is a USB 4 port extender hub over ethernet. In the gaming room is the other end with my keyboard, mouse, and other devices with zero lag. This is my NAS drive. It's plugged into the server via USB 3.0. Configured at RAID 5, it has five 18 terabyte enterprise hard drives installed. That means one drive can fail and the others will rebuild the replacement. With RAID 5, I have a total formatted capacity of around 67 terabytes. This box can get hot, so it's no wonder why I keep it out here. 
Before I forget, I want to show you what's happening behind the theater screen. For the main left and right channels, I'm using the Klipsch RF73 towers and the RC643 center channel speaker. Those large black cylinders are my twin Odin subwoofers. There is an 18 inch sub driver in each and they're powered by that Crown Audio amp you saw moments ago in the server room. I have a build video on my channel for those. Next up, the gaming room. And it's a media room, plus I work in there. If you watch my man cave or bat cave video, you'll see that I wasn't able to settle. I did in fact have to surround myself with all the kinds of things any normal grown ass adult man should have. I have a lot going on in this room so I'm not going to describe everything. The room is equipped with a 9 channel Dolby Atmos system and an 85 inch 4K 120 gaming TV by Vizio. It's where I work on videos, CAD design, play guitar, and enjoy some PC, Xbox, or PlayStation gaming whenever I have time to kill. The room is also surrounded by acoustic panels that I designed and built. Please see my YouTube channel for that video. I'm recording this dialogue in here right now. I just want to mention this one thing. I got this keyboard from Logitech that lights up when it detects motion. That comes in extremely useful when PC gaming in the dark. I also got these large mouse pads that were the exact size of my end tables. How rare is that? Wrapping up, I installed LED strips behind the TV to get a touch more light in the room when gaming in the dark. They can get all disco techy if you want, or you can just shut them off. Nighty night. We are coming to the end of the tour. Before I go, I attempted to record some big screen visuals from the Epson projector. I'm sure you've seen this before, but I'll switch from the standard full frame aspect ratio to the cinemascope and back again. I'll be using snippets of the movie Gravity on Blu-ray pulled from the Plex Media server. For the sake of time, I'm going to speed this up just a little bit. After several days of re-editing and multiple attempts to post this video, 
I keep getting copyright warnings from YouTube, no matter how short of a sample I play. Maybe that'll work. Thanks for sticking with me.